Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshik's Made From channel. To all uh, people celebrating uh, Christmas, I wish you all uh, happy festivities. And uh, today's video is going to be all about uh, getting MVT to run under our mainframe Moshik's with VM370. This, uh, this is the system you're seeing here. Um, it's been uh, running up there serving users. I think we have about 30, 40 users there, as well as uh, uh, some uh, some heavy users such as uh, our friend René Ferland up in Montreal and myself doing heavy work on it. Uh, it hasn't skipped a beat. Um, it's been up, as you can see here, 48 days. Is that about almost uh, six, seven weeks? And um, and uh, so it's been very, very stable. And under this system, I now want to get MBT installed as an additional guest operating system. As you remember, we already have, uh, from a previous video, we already have MBS TK4 running under MBM370. MBM Runs very well, very nicely, very stable. Then we have uh, DOS VS, of course, and uh, Professor René Ferland has made a bunch of videos about that. And uh, and lately I also made a video about the almost extinct OS VS1, and now uh, and getting up and running under um, under uh, and the VM370 and also launching jobs uh, in there, especially because my beloved uh, PL1 uh, optimizing compiler is available with, uh, within OS VS1. So and now I want to add MVT. Now, just a little bit, of, just a little bit of history of what MVT is. As you remember, OS 360 was the operating system that was announced on the S360, and then later on they followed up with uh, three follow-on operating systems, which could be generated from the exact same source code. So again, this is the same source code, and with with uh, macros defined in the source code, which the system programmer would edit, he, uh, she or he would then de decide what operating system they wanted to generate the binary they could either go with pcp which was just um, just like mft mft but with one partition and that was a very very simple operating system for machines with uh, less than i think 64 or 128 kilobytes of memory um, and then you had the choice of either mft or mf or mvt as you remember uh osvs1 i just had a video just a couple of days about it um, uh, MFT uh, was the predecessor of OSVS1, and so MFT is is multi-programming, so you could have multiple tasks running at the same time, but with a fixed number of partitions. So you had to decide how many partitions you wanted to have within within your operating system at IPL time, and then you had to you had to divide those part memory partitions so that your jobs would fit in them. And then MVT was meant for the largest machines, which is uh, uh, the one that had variable number of tasks, so you could have as many partitions as you wanted. And uh, of course, TS TSO, the time sharing option was released for MVT first. Um, uh, 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 TSO would not run on MFT. I know that, uh, by the way, a curiosity there, a strange thing is that OS VS1, which of course is a successor of MFT, and then later that line died off, didn't continue. Um, there was a company, I think up in uh, Illinois, if I'm not mistaken, that produced a TS1, which was TSO for OS VS1. So uh, OS VS1 did have a, uh, a TSO component for it. And of course, it also had JS1 in it, which we saw in that uh, video. Um, I think it's, uh, let's go check. Uh, OS PS1 should find it easy. Yeah, so this it's in M primary. M102 would tell you about OS VS1, just one. And there was a TSO for OS VS1, just as a side note. Um, and so MVT is what we're gonna uh, focus on today. And then, as you know, from MVT, then uh, IBM created OS VS2, which is which became MVS. So OS VS2, the very first version of OS VS2 was just MVT plus vSAM. <laughs> That's all it really was, MVT and vSAM. They called it um, OS VS2, and then later on this, 
it became they added VTAM of course and then it became uh, and then it became um, uh, MVS uh, even though uh, VTAM was also backported to MVT uh, later on uh, the last version of MVT was 2108 and that's the version I have and I won't install it on our mainframe uh, VM370 mainframe out in the cloud. So there are several things that we need to consider there. First of all is that VM370 does not recognize uh, devices um, dynamically such as later later versions did like VM ESA and of course ZVM. And to this, is, and, and to this day also even ZOS does not automatically recognize devices so um, um, it's not it's not a given thing but uh, vm370 definitely not doesn't which means you have to define the devices uh, by uh, compiling the the uh, devices access uh, source code from from scratch and um, so in six pack we have that because professor Onefano actually did that for our mainframe in the very beginning and since I use it quite a lot, what I did is I put it here. Moshix, if you remember, this is the website where you can uh, go to subscribe if you want to get an account. But also, I have here somewhere. Yeah, I have the output of the DM of the job that created the uh, devices. So that uh, because I need this quite a lot. And so I put it here so I can watch, I can look at it with the web browser. And so I can look where the devices are, if I need to add more devices on which, on which um, device address, this is device address. Because you see here, when you compile the new uh, nucleus in VM370, you can specify where you want the devices. So for instance, 3350 disks, I have a bunch of them here, 540 device address 540, 16 of those. And then at uh, 3420, we have some tapes, 580, 16 of those, uh, channel to channel adapters, 600, etc. etc. Um, by the way, channel to channel adapter is also what I use on uh, 500. It's almost like a convention address for a channel to channel adapter. And that's why I use it in my VMSA for the uh, VNet revival project that uh, I have going on called HNet for HerculesNet. Uh, and so, um, by keeping this in mind, let's go and see where we can get MVT included within VM370 to get it up and running as a guest machine here on this machine. So, of course, first thing is we need to shut this machine down. As I just said, it's been running for 48 days. It pains me a little bit to shut it down because there's no problems with it, but I need to make a backup before I start making changes, obviously, so that people don't get disrupted. So let's see if there's anybody online other than me. There's nobody online, so let me log off here and disconnect for now. Okay, and now I have your terminal session and let's use this. I have big font, so hopefully you can all read this. Uh, if I need to make it bigger, you just shout. Uh, compute SSH. And now on this one instance on the Google Cloud, I have both um, MBS 3.8 as well as the VM 370 hosts running. So um, that's why it's called MBS Prod. I'm going to connect to it now. I'm going to ask for password. And here we are. So you can see this is Ubuntu 16.04 and I always run everything within screen and this is the Hercules console for our VM370 so we'll have to shut it down so it's been up for six weeks and six days well as I said almost seven weeks um, this was just me this kind of dialing into CP watch uh, what you just saw here on the screen and then disconnecting from it and just one more check to see if there's nobody online so we say stop all well uh, train all and then we say shut down and we take the mainframe down okay so we've stopped working Unfortunately, uh, VM370 only recognizes one CPU. That's very, very uh, sad because MBS 3.8 does see 
uh, two CPUs, it works very, very uh, nicely, two CPUs, but uh, VM370 only sees one. I wish it would see two, um, but uh, we have to work with what we got, all right? So, shut this down, and now it's time to take a backup. I haven't taken a backup in six, in seven weeks, and so we have had a lot of uses, a lot of stuff there, so the way I do backups, so you can see a little bit about the operation of the of the cloud mainframe here, is I have uh, this directories. Um, MBS prod is my is where you guys are connecting to get uh, with your MBS accounts, and six pack prod is where VM three seventy resides. So what I do typically is I don't have a lot of space on this instance, and I'm running already at eighty six percent here. So I'll first make a copy and then I delete the old backup. And I don't have to worry about backing up the whole virtual machine here because Google has this uh, backed up for me and that's the good thing about running in the cloud. Backups are provided by the uh, carrier. The only thing is you have to back up to eliminate user errors when you delete stuff you didn't want to delete. And they do make snapshots of this virtual machine now and then. So everything is backed up properly. So. Let's do a backup of this, and we call it backup. Oh, six pack. I make this all uppercase so that I can immediately see when this was done. So 23 December 2018. So let's just run a little bit. Let's run a little bit. Meantime, I want to tell you something curious and funny that happened over the last 24 hours. I got a couple of emails and messages on YouTube from a bunch of students of uh, some university um, here in the US. And uh, they were apparently told by the, prof by the teacher or, or faculty member or professor that I am just an elaborate marketing strategy for IBM and that I am secretly um, producing these videos and this channel for IBM to rev to revive or as, as basically as a, <laughs> as a marketing strategy for IBM and um, and I did tell them that this is not the case but apparently they don't believe me so I just want to make this just a statement for uh, this channel I don't work for IBM I have never received in the last 34 years well, uh, well, with one exception, I've not be, ever been paid by IBM. I did get, in 1999, I arranged for a speech of uh, Eric Stallman, the famous uh, open source guy in Israel, and uh, I was paid uh, for arranging that by IBM, I think $400 or something. But other than that, I've never been paid anything by IBM, just to make it very, very clear. And the amount of money I get from the from the advertising that is paced on this videos is in the cents. I get cents per video, ever. I mean, not per day, not per month. Um, so uh, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't do this for IBM. Let's just be very clear. Anyway, so we made the backup. Um, so now I want to delete the old one. Okay. Oh yeah. Very careful with this. Uh, anytime you are root, you see these things here, and uh, you, you need to be extremely careful. So I will not talk. Okay. So a little bit of operation here. We got now a new fresh backup of uh, VM370 and now we can start working on getting MVT moved in there. Um, first things first, um, my MVT And as you can see here, this is the part where we need to add, these are the 
these are the drives and there's some 3330s and some 3314s and we need to add them at sensible addresses so um, I also discussed this with uh, René Ferlon who is the co-maintainer of the system and he suggested these addresses however I've also added OSVS1 in the meantime which he doesn't know the addresses of so I need to compare this with OSVS1 to see there's no no conflict um, so let's do that okay because there's two aspects to get MVT running defining the addresses to Hercules and then also within VM370 defining the virtual machine what we're doing right now is defining the addresses to VM370 so so that VM370 will see the disk packs of, uh, of MVT so let's go into here and you can see here that you have a part where all the guests are and I'm going to make now make here MVT and we're going to move the MVT disks in here um, and so this is how we're going to they're going to be in there and now we need to see the Hercules config files so this is what we're working on, we give it 16, you can see here 16 megabytes of memory, one CPU only, of course. Um, this is the mainframe that you're working with, that's our definition. As you can see here, all the output goes to device null, so if, if people do print, uh, we don't waste up any space. I am working, by the way, and uh, this is just a side note. On a, on a system of scripts for our MBS 3.8 in the cloud where people can print and they can indicate where they wanted to have it emailed to. So if they print on the MBS um, mainframe out in the, in the Moshex cloud, they will uh, get uh, PDFs emailed to their uh, email boxes if they're registered users. So I'm working on that. I'll, and I'll make a video about that hopefully in the next few days. Um, so here we have everything that's VM370. This is uh, spool files, etc. This is CMS. Um, this is a private volume for myself, for my own stuff. Um, here we have for HNet, um, just so you see. Uh, this is the 2703 uh, emulation so that people can ring. Um, and we can connect this machine to HNet, but I'll talk more about that in, in a separate video. And then um, I'm going to say here include, well, we can actually just copy this and say there's the CNF, and so we'll include it from that directory. Uh, what we do have to make sure is that we don't conflict with anything in MBS so let's go in there and check so this is all it really takes and nothing else needs to be changed here okay so that is done so now what I want to do is copy root mvt asp uh, test into uh, test mvt here Okay, so let's go to guests. Yeah. So this now should start. And just I just want to verify the addresses here. 230, 250, 230 and then 250 to 254 and 258. Um, So we have them here on both sides, and now well, let's go back again to single window. What I do want to do is we split and the guest machine for MBS. Uh, 
Yeah. So now we can compare the two within Vim, the best editor out there, and make sure there's no conflict. So 230, I don't see any better. The one thing that I was a little worried about was the uh, was the uh, OSVS was the six uh, the the compiler pack that I had added, um, but uh, that's not really important. Uh, and the OSVS one, as you can see here, the OSVS one. So that's at address one forty nine, and this doesn't conflict with any of this. I have some two hundred device. 200 series devices here but there are 245 246 248 and I don't have any of those and 230 are all the 2314s of MBS or in the 100 series of devices so I don't see any conflict here and I know that um, so we can close this and we can say we split uh, just to make sure so again, this is MVT, and we have 142, 143, 144, one. Yeah, uh, there's no no conflicts whatsoever. So this should work. Okay. So I just want to make sure we don't have conflict with the OSVS one, because that's one thing that Rene has uh, is not aware of where I placed it in the cloud. Uh, VM370. So now that we got this done, we can copy the files into uh, into here into DASD. So uh, should copy all the files here, and I have them uh, here. So let's go back to root, and we go to ASP, and then we move from. Okay. I want this to okay. and now we can do tar. Okay. So now that we got this done, uh, let's go into the uh, so this MVT, the good thing about it, it has both ASP and HASP. Something I forgot to mention at the beginning of this video. ASP is the predecessor of JS3, and HASP, of course, is the predecessor of JS2. Uh, we still have all the HASP error messages, uh, still called HASP, which stands for Houston Automatic Spool Program, which was added as a spooling program to MVT um, during the NASA days. MVT was the, uh, by the way, MVT was the operating system that got Apollo to land on the moon, so it is a very important operating system. But there's also ASP on it, and ASP was also developed, um, I think, originally by General Motors, if I'm not mistaken, because they wanted to cluster mainframes together. And uh, an ASP, which stands for Attached System Processor, would allow several mainframes to work together on distributing jobs and if one went down the whole complex will continue to work so we're going to look into this a little bit once we get this all up and running um, so the test is only in here okay um, so I think we can just copy this copy all to root six pack A370 tests and the T has the here okay that was that was fast because those files are not that big yeah I mean some are just 34 megabytes um, so this weren't well everything else we don't really need this this time so we can just uh, go back up in the directory structure go there, and then go to guests and MVT and yeah now let's just open it up again. Let's let's check one file name. Uh, let's use uh, 150. This is their system residence file. Let's make sure it is actually there. So
150 is there now they need they are on the DASD not under the uh, MVT guest uh, root directory so we need to you see here the problem they are on the DASD and so we need to make DASD and then copy everything here into DASD Yeah, uh, everything else should be there now. Yes. So I think this is how it wants it to be done. You can remove here. And you know from the video I just released two days ago that uh, C means for compressed uh, um, count key device. And as you know, we now have in Hercules the latest uh, Hercules by Fish. We have now huge DASDI support, but this is all still very small devices, 3330s and 33, 2314s. So these are all have nothing to do with huge devices. Okay, so I think we got this licked. It's time to get this started and start adding the guest virtual machine. Okay, unless something goes terribly wrong, we can just start it. Now, because I have a Hercules CNF in the directory, I don't have to write minus F configuration file, it will pick it up and hopefully also pick up the, uh, the MVT um, uh, DASTIS now. Just let me just run one more final check. I'm always over cautious. Yeah, it picks this up. So that's fine. So this should work. This should work. Um, I don't see why. If you do see a problem, shout now or hold your peace forever. Um, I'll just get this going. I'll make this a little bit smaller so that I don't need a huge window next time I want to connect to it with screen. Um, this is up and running. Let's get a terminal attached to it. Okay. Okay. So let's check device 250. Yep, yeah, ASP res. It saw it. So now 250, but of course um, MVT expects to boot from device, from uh, sorry, to IPL from device 150, uh, and I can easily show this here. Um, by the way, this is a little script I have here running, so that when I log in into the uh, into the into the uh, instance into my Ubuntu instance running the Google Cloud, I see exactly how much spy space I have left, how many users are logged in. Uh, the IPs, etc., etc. So, and a little bit about RAM usage. This is a three gigabyte, which is more than enough because I can only run 16 megabytes per mainframe anyway. So, but let's go to MVTS. And and you will see that in the Hercules conf file, um, this is what we expect to IPL from. So this is the devices that um, that that MVT expects to see, but we couldn't use these devices because of some conflicts with MV with MVS, and so I had to put the devices also where VM three seventy has them generated within the nucleus, because you remember that we had this thing here right so that's the disconnect here right now that we had to use certain addresses here but um, but the MBT operating system is generated to see only this addresses that's what we have to overcome now in the in the machine uh, in the in the virtual machine generation so uh, oops so I am now logged in, I think. Oh. 
Okay, so I need to Okay, so we can go and add now uh, this to the, to the six pack here. Uh, six packs direct A, and we go to the bottom, and we start to add now a virtual machine. Maybe a few more. Okay, and we have the definition here. We split and we say where is it? root mbt asp mbt files. Yes, and then oh. where is it? Yes. Uh, yes. Okay, so this is what I need to add here. As you can see here, we have, uh, we define here user machine every time in the direct file and directory file you have. User directive means that you're defining a new virtual machine. Virtual machine is a user in VM370. So uh, we can copy all this part here and I explain this part first, but maybe we close the other. Um, okay, so I can copy this easier. We copy this and we say here. Okay, so we got this copied. What I'm doing here, I'm defining a new user MVT with password MVT, give it eight megabytes up to 16. Uh, permissions G, EC mode means um, uh, there is uh, there is a, a basic mode and EC mode. That's uh, what the mainframe will see. So there is no help bar or anything like that. Then we define a console 3215 because I saw in the in the file we just had open uh, that it uses 3215 file. And then it uses a console, which is the console that goes for ASP. ASP always needs its own console, the Jest3 predecessor. So we dedicate a console here out of the consoles that are defined to VM370 to this one only. And that's something we have to deal with a little bit specially there. Um, and then we have another console here, 3270. And then we have all the school files that we found there. Uh, there's quite a few printers defined. And then we can start with the dedicate. So in the dedicate section, what we do is we define the real device that VM370 can see here on the right. This is what VM370 can see and make it visible to MVT as if it was uh, device 130. So we're remapping here. And that's the amazing thing of VM370. That's and, and, and also VM ESA and ZVM. Uh, you can remap devices, something that um, something that ESX and and Zen and KVM still don't really handle very well, but here it's very easy to do. Uh, that's one of the big advantages. So let's take all the disks and copy them over here as well. Uh, make this the current line. Okay, and then we can put it here. Okay, so now we got the disks defined, and now we just need to find a bunch of uh, a bunch of uh, thirty-two seventies. Okay, so we can make this. Okay, so so that's it. That's the whole virtual machine definition, and. Um, we got this done. Okay, so now the next step is to do to make the definition um, official by telling VM370. So we do file, and then what we do is we say direct six pack 
direct and this makes it uh, this registers this directory within CP as the main directory okay so I quickly stopped the video because I needed to actually go back and change the password from MVT which is too general of course to um, to a different password and uh, so just for security to secure the system and then I did the command that I just typed in but um, it is now done and now what we can do is to start uh, try to start this uh, machine um, so maybe make this smaller now and move this over here or maybe just remove it completely so we don't have too much clutter and and I start a new session and I log in as MVT that pass password that I just changed yeah and so now it tells us uh, that uh, device 010 is not defined and that's because um, uh, I need to it, it doesn't see it because I need to connect to it so uh, but of course 0c2 is a VM370 device so I need to disable that device from VM370 um, so that um, it will not interfere with that so let me do that here still have this going uh, we can do the disable zero, zero 02 oh we are on MBS here <laughs> okay where is it uh, yeah here it is okay this is our um, MV, MBS running in the cloud so let's see how long this has been up eight weeks well wow. And here's our okay, so we can say disable zero, zero C2. Okay, so now we can start new session, and this is zero C2, which is perfect. So now, so now it, it doesn't control that anymore, but I need to log out and log back in again. So MDT. And you can see now I don't have that problem anymore because now this console here, 0C2, doesn't get connected to um, VM370 because I disabled it here, you can see. And so we can remove that now. So just to make clear what windows we have here, this is, let's make this a little bit smaller. Uh, it's ugly, let's do it like this. Okay, this is my main uh, uh, session here. I don't need that really. So these are the main sessions that we have right now. And this one we put here. Okay, so we know that the system residence file is on uh, device 160, 150. So let's see if this comes up now. Yeah, so this has come up. We should probably also connect in one more device and dial it into MVT. So this is now 14, which we saw before. It's an additional console. And we can also put this here. Uh, let's put this here just in case something moves there. Obviously, this is not going to be very practical to have to have this, device, this console here all the time. But what I can do is I can have this console actually be here I could easily start uh, with ZC3270 local host and then I connect this as device 0c2 so that then MVT could stay up all the time and I don't have to uh, be afraid of losing this connection because of course right now I'm connecting from home to the Google uh, data center I don't even know where it is somewhere um, I don't know, somewhere in the US and so I could do that and then I will never lose the console because it's a local connection. But um, just for the sake of this video, we'll continue with that right now. Oh, where is our six pack? Here it is. 
So now, as you can see here, there's one little problem I see is that it wants the clock. It, 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 it doesn't get the clock. And I have to see there is a setting somewhere um, within VM370 to pass on the clock from CP to the guest machines because MV, MVS doesn't have problem with that and uh, we need to see I need to see about that but uh, I'll, I'll try to find a solution to that but right now we need to set the clock so we do it here by saying R00 date equals well MVT is not Y2 compliant so we'll say um, well the day I started working in the data center I remember that it was in 1983 and it was sometimes in September so let's say like that. clock equals uh, yeah param is accepted and so as you can see now this console went dead that's the uh, MBS MBT console and the ASP console took over if I was to type now um, return I will go back to the MVT console we have one additional console here so you can see here what's going on um, okay so you can see here every, uh, what's going on here in the system and we started with uh, you start ASP or JS3 with start asterisk is the kind of the you know every subsystem within the mainframe M MVT and MVS mainframe has its own uh, special character that passes commands to it as you know dollar passes it to hasp or to JS2 asterisk passes it to JS3 minus passes it on to DB2 and uh, and there's other such so um, We'll just say here start GSS, and so now um, this is now operating. There is one issue here, which is the card reader. Um, the card reader has a problem, and I know what this is. It's a missing interrupt handler. Um, in so IPL is complete for ASP. We could now start uh, DCAM if we wanted to. So remember, there's no VTAM here yet. And so if you want to do TSO, TSO needs another telecommunications protocol. And the predecessor of VTAM is TCAM. And so TS, the first version of TSO was actually only able to connect through TCAM. And TCAM was carried forward into MBS for a while. And you could start both TCAM and VTAM at the same time. And TSO could work with both. Nowadays you only have TCAM. But once TCAM is up, you can have TSO started. And if we have one more session, dial MVT. Yeah, this is AK, IKJ. Every message that starts with IKJ, you know, is her, um, TSO. So we can say now, Herc, and we're now in TSO. Uh, maybe RFE is installed. Yeah, this is the TSO as it was delivered in. Uh, in the 70s um, there was no panels those were all added later when c-list uh, the c-list programming language was added to tso uh, you would just have just very similar to to vm370 you would just have a, um, a screen where you could type commands so like here you do something like that and here you have other commands and uh, you could have a help file you could we call an assembler. You could assemble actually um, interactively, COBOL, Fortran, and um, you could allocate data sets. You could run a program. You could list the data set. Um, let's see, this cat works here. You can see it there. Yeah, we can do a list cat 
sys1 parmlib list cat sys1 parmlib yeah I mean this is so archaic I don't even remember the commands anymore but it does work um, and we can of course now also submit jobs um, this is probably what console is this uh, I think it's 34 let's see here what console it shows yeah we can do uh, reset 0c4 to undial it That's not a device because it's still working. Maybe it's 0C5, I don't know, but uh, I'll deal with this later. But so this uh, does connect, does work. And um, and so now we have uh, this working. Now we can stop uh, TSO by doing stop TSO. And it wants to know why F stop. Okay, and then we can stop VCAM by doing Z transaction processing, and TCAM will uh, see a, a telecommunication protocol, and then TCAM will stop. And now that we got this done, let's try to get um, to stop ASP and start HASP just for fun. So. Uh, can do here return okay so now as you can see here this console came back because ASP has ended so now we could start just has and this is of course a predecessor of JS2 so let's put the main console here um, so it wants to know how to start and we just can do the no request, which will make it warm. Okay, so this came up, and So uh, this all runs fine, no active jobs. We could start now, of course, TCAM again and TSO, or of course, since we have uh, the, do we have any outstanding requests? No outstanding requests. So we could now just say here, 
um, spool punch to MVT and we could now start punching files uh, jobs to MVT and get uh, our response back here um, if I dial one more uh, that's my 0c4 which is disabled enable 0c4 Correct. Mm. Reset zero C four. That's very strange. So, but we can get one more. And I'll CPU watch. And we can see here now, machine is not busy at all, and we have MBT running here. We could also start, of course, OSVS one. We could also start. Um, uh, MVT and DOS VS. At some point, the machine will start paging, of course, a lot because all these machine, all these virtual machines are quite big. They don't fit within 16 megabytes, and they will see the page rate start to go up. It's already paging quite a lot, 312 pages per second. That's that's quite a bit. Um, it can do much more, but the but the paging is blazingly fast, both on MVT and on uh, VM370. MV, MV, MVS has, I meant MVS has blazingly fast paging. MVS is really, really efficient in paging. It can take, uh, I've seen on my machines, I've been stress testing it with several thousand pages per second. Uh, I think the peak I was able to stress test was 8,000 pages per second. And, uh, and on this virtual machine here in the Google Cloud, no problem at all. So, um, that, that certainly is not a problem. If you have NVMe disks, you can go to crazy amounts of paging. So don't worry about paging. Back in the days when I was working on real mainframes, paging was usually in the two, 300, 400 pages per second was considered normal. Um, you wanted to use all the memory you had, you pay for it. So you were, um, you were supposed to do some paging. Nowadays, when people see a little bit of paging, they think, uh, they think there's a problem and people, Nowadays, we'll always oversize the machines uh, by a lot. I think a lot of resources are wasted. I wouldn't be surprised if not 60, 70 percent of all resources in a typical data center are over allocated. Whereas in, when you have a mainframe, you think very hard before you buy it, what you need and you want to use what you bought. Um, but anyway, so that's working. And so we got it done. So we got MVT now defined. And we got uh, OSVS1, and we got DOSVS, and of course MVS TK4, all running, um, able to run, uh, if potentially at the same time, on this uh, on this uh, cloud VM370, cloud mainframe, and uh, and so we got this done. Now uh, coming back again to one thing I wanted to do since we have the console open here, is as you remember this same host. Uh, this same host also has my MVS machine and one thing I'm working on is that people will be able within these MVS as the console is here um, will be able to print and then once it's printed there is this script that was written by one community member um, what was it again? Um, well, it's somewhere on GitHub um, that does hurt JOS, I think. Yeah, here it is. So I've been playing with it. This hurt JOS, what it does is a is something that connects to the socket to the amp, to this printer here, um, to this printer as a socket printer, and then every time somebody prints, it will turn it into a file, and then I found a way with this tool here, uh, enter, uh, this tool, I, and every time that a new file is written to a directory, I can then make it into a PDF, and and then I have another script that was actually written by Jürgen Winkelmann, which I'm adapting, which searches for particular information within the printout, and from there then compares it to a table of email addresses and sends it to the email address registered for that user on MVS. So I'm going to go and make a video about that 
because I'm very excited about uh, being able to allow people to print and get a PDF uh, sent to their email address so you can print as much as you want. Um, which right now, of course, when we print, it all goes into a file and they can't see it. That, so they have to go to spool and sometimes spool fills up a little bit. Let's see how filled up the spool is right now. It's a 13%, so it's it's okay, people. And I have a and I have a and I have a Z timer start a task here, which every couple of which once a day uh, removes all output that's older than I think two or three days. So um, um, so it should, it has worked very 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 well for almost a year now. We had this up and running. I I don't know how many people are active right now. Well, somebody is connected. I don't know who it is, but uh, somebody is uh, connected. We can have up to 80 users concurrently. The most I've seen was about 20 at one time. So no problem at all for this machine. So uh, so in this video, you saw a little bit of how I operate my cloud mainframe, how I back things up. Uh, let's see here, I have backups. Um, and then we saw how we have to look at the generated um, addresses for VM370 before we include any new devices and then we copy those over carefully then after we did that I had to go and change the directory file in uh, VM370 to uh, to allow um, the MVT virtual machine to see the devices where it needed to see them because there's a difference between where VM370 can can see the device without any conflicts and where MVT has it generated within the sysgen that the system administrator or the system programmer did and with the and with the dedicate um, directive within the directory file we can remap those and then we saw how to bring it up and we saw a little bit about ASP which is the JS3 um, the JS3 uh, sub, spooling subsystem and how to get that up and running. I do have a video, by the way, here somewhere about JS3. It's an old, it's an older one, but it, it's it's a good one. Uh, let's go to JS3. Oh, should, should come out. Yeah, JS3. This is video M6. It's one of the earlier ones, but after 40 years, we got. I in this video, I actually set a whole cluster up. So we have two machines over channel to channel adapters talking to each other and uh, backing each other up. Um, and uh, one of my better videos here, as you can see here, yeah, where I have two machines. So you should you should watch M6. I'll link to this video in the description below this video. And uh, everybody is free to go on uh, on my moshix.dino.net and see that the MKRIO output from when, when we created this virtual machine. This was uh, early September. And uh, and see how the devices are defined there. There's nothing secret here. Uh, welcome to go have a look at it. And, uh, and that's it. So I think this was a nice and simple video. I'm gonna go and shut down MVT here gracefully so that we don't have uh, any problems with that and um, I have to say PDASP term yeah I'll have to find out how to shut this down it's been a while since I worked with MBT but I have um, so okay that's it if you like this particular video and if you like what we've done here I would ask you to press on the thumbs up button Please uh, post comments, uh, whatever comes to your mind, because uh, comments are important to make videos uh, be found by the Google search engine. So we can benefit uh, the community at large by posting videos, because those videos are going to be picked up by the search engine. I mean, your comments are going to be picked up by the search engine and add to the overall searchability of these videos. And if you haven't subscribed yet, I would urge you to subscribe now. Thank you very much and see you for the next video. Goodbye.